And welcome inside Delaware Live Sports. Monday afternoon playoffs are heating up quarterfinals and semifinals across the board. We also already crowned some champions, outdoor track championships this past weekend. And now I'll say I'm joined by Nick Halliday, Jason Winchell, and Mike Lang. And guys, playoffs are heating up. Um, some big stuff to go over. But first off, how's everybody doing on this Monday? It feels like a Monday, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that again, Mike. <laughs> It's, Nick, it's the calm before the storm. Uh, tomorrow, exactly. tomorrow throughout the rest of the week are going to be some busy days for us. Yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. And before we go any further, we just want to you know, send our congratulations to the teams who were named our DIAA Outdoor Track Champions in Division Two. your girls' champions, the St. Mark Spartans, for the first time in 29 years. Right, Mike? That's correct. How about that? So St. Mark's, we saw the celebration on Twitter. Congratulations to them. And your D2 Boys Outdoor Track Champions. How about Lake Forest High School? They take home the track championship in Division Two, And then over in Division One, the girls' champions, Padua Academy, and also some individual awards over there. Right, Mike? Yeah, the uh, pole vault winner was Erin uh, Kelleher. Broke her uh, state record that she set a week ago. At the Newcastle County Champion uh, Championship here at Avicenio Stadium, so congratulations to uh, Aaron Kelleher. Another dominating performance by the Pandas, and I believe this is nine in a row for them. Correct, it is nine for them. Wow, how about for that? Padua. <laughs> Just a side note, Nick. Nick Alexandrini, my uh, my older daughter, uh, Doctor Lang, was uh, was a member of the first of those nine state champions uh, back when they oh, were in Division Two. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And now she can just sit back and watch them. Jackie's jacking in my house somewhere. I don't know where it is, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about that? Padua, D1 girls, nine years in a row. And then again, you got St. Mark's and D2 for the first time in 29 years. And then your Division One boys champions, of course, Salesianum School. Mike and Jay, um, good season for the Sals. Yeah, it was. And uh, it was a little different for the Sals this year, Mike. They, they they ran a lot. They won a lot of the sprint races, which normally they, they're the distance kings, but yeah, I guess we, they were a little sprint uh, we normally stars this year. For it's, uh, we're not built for speed, apparently, but this year they did have a sprint. Uh, they did win a sprint. And they placed, I think, in the 100 and the 200. Yep. So D2 girls, St. Mark's, D2 boys, Lake Forest, D1 girls, Padua, D1 boys, Sally's, and your unified track champion, Smyrna High School this year. So congratulations to the Smyrna Eagles, again, your unified track champion. So crowned five champions, but a lot more to talk about and a long way to go in some of these other, other spring sports as we're heading to late May. And, guys, a lot has happened in the past week, a lot of games this past weekend. Nick, a long day, obviously a track for you on Dover on Saturday, just a lot going on. And before we continue, if we just want to go around, and um, Nick, I'll start with you, and just one takeaway from maybe this weekend um, out of any of our spring sports. Um, I'll tell you what, there were a lot of strong performances. No real state record winners except for Kelleher. Um, but um, it was a great day down, down in Dover for two days. And uh, honestly, hats off to um, – all of the athletes and I know they're all excited they got to get this season in so um, I think just taken away from it was the fact that we actually had a, a somewhat of a normalcy down there and it was a, a great event Jason uh, one takeaway from anything stick out to you this past weekend a lot of playoff games yeah well I was not, just, I'll, I'll tell you what I was uh, impressed with some of the, the baseball you know and and um, I'll give Mike credit. Mike picked some of these, some of the upsets he he thought might happen, and they did. But uh, it, I thought a lot of the baseball was outstanding this weekend, and you, you know, you had some great games, good matchups, um, and and some surprise winners. So uh, I can't wait for the the quarterfinals to kick off there tomorrow. Mike, how about you? I know all over the place this weekend. Yeah, well, Saturday was one of those uh, one of those days. That I I was at uh, three different events, and the only reason I was at three different events is because there were no softball games on Saturday night, so I couldn't go to four. <laughs> but uh, what a, a great day to drive around Newcastle County and uh, and check out uh, some different sports. I saw three different sports and uh, 
five different teams, I think. So it was a five different schools. It was it was a, it was a fun day, and uh, I just wish there was not so many events on one day, so I could see more of them. Absolutely, definitely agree there. And guys, to get things started, we've got. I believe six sports to go over here. Playoffs still underway. We're going to get started first, though, with the Boys Lacrosse State Championship. Again, the semifinals are set for tomorrow. And again, some quarterfinal matchups on Saturday. Sanford, they're your top seed. They advance with an 18-3 win over Smyrna. And they're going to meet up with the five-seed defending state champions. That's Kay Penlopen, who get the win over DMA, who was the four-seed, 21-4. to four. So Sanford and Kay Penlopen, um, decisive wins for them as they head into the semifinals. Yeah, and I, I, Nick, I think that's going to be the matchup tomorrow. I mean, I think that is going to be a heavyweight battle between two very, very good teams who just played um, about two weeks ago uh, up at Sanford, uh, where Sanford got a, a late goal, uh, you know, the, to win that game. But it was uh, a back and forth affair, and, and I, I see that again tomorrow. And I, I think that's going to be the game tomorrow. Uh, uh, the 5 p.m. at, at Sanford, there, uh, you know, two heavyweights going at it with the trip trip to the finals on the line, and I think this that's another game that could potentially go to overtime. Uh, like you know, but uh, a one like I said, one goal game the first time, and uh, and I think that's going to be that's going to be key tomorrow is whether or not Kate Penlope could get off to an early start. Uh, uh, and maybe put a little pressure on Sanford because Kate Penlopen has been to the semifinals before and, you know, has played in some of these bigger type atmospheres. Uh, so it would be interesting to see how Sanford handles that. But I think this could be a, a really, really instant classic type of game tomorrow. Yeah, Jay, to piggyback off of you, I, I really think that it's going to be the battle test is the difference here. Um, the regular season's one game, uh, but then having the experience, being in the postseason, having your coaches have have coached in the coach in the in the postseason, um, that's where you're going to find out uh, what what these teams are really uh, made um, made of, and I, and I think that's where I would have to give Cape the slight edge here, obviously because of history. Um, but I wouldn't take anything away from Sanford. Uh, I've seen them live. Um, they really match up well with Cape, if you if you want to know the truth. They're not that big, but they are fast and they are physical. So uh, I, I think it I think it might come down to just seeing how weather tested they are. Yeah, that should be a really good one. And Mike, you look down to the other semifinal matchup. The two seeds, Salesianum, a big win for them, 19 to three over Tower Hill, and then Archmere, the three seed, gets a big win over Caesar Rodney, 18 to six. So Sally's and Archmere, it's a two-three matchup. That game also semifinals tomorrow at seven o'clock at Sally's. Mike, what do you see happening there? You know that Sally's team real well. How's their season been this year, and what's going to be the key there? Well, I think Salesianum can't get. Completion, and I don't think they will. They they played Archmer earlier this year, and it was a a big win. Uh, I think Archmer validated its spot in the semis uh, by defeating Caesar Rodney handily for the second time this year. Um, and, you know, we've all seen Salisbury uh, this year battling those uh, those real national powers and being you know in those games and leaving those games late. Uh, the one question with with Sally's and it's come up before is. is uh, Sometimes they've struggled in, in down the stretch of the fourth quarter, even against Cape Hemlope. And, uh when they played Cape, Cape scored four, that's going four nothing in the fourth quarter. So uh, I think the South just need to put together all 48 minutes and they, they should be able to handle Archmere, but Archmere's got some big dudes and some, you know, they're physical and they can score. Uh, maybe they, uh, maybe they'll, ch- they'll figure out a way to uh, slow down the Slizian offense because not too many uh, opponents have done that this year. So I expect South to just keep doing what they've done all year long and that's score a lot of goals and just outmuscle their opponents. And, Mike, uh, I think this, this for Archmer is going to come down to face-offs. Uh, Jack O'Neill uh, for 
Archmer did a great job against Cesar Rodney and won a lot of them, but he's going up against probably one of the best face-off men in the country. <laughs> and Matthew Riley, who, uh, you know, did well against when he played face-off wise against the national teams that he's played this year. And, you know, I think that could be key. Uh, you know, one way to slow down the Sally's offense is, is skip possession and hold it. Um, Tower Hill tried that in the, in the first quarter the other day and, and had the ball for about four or five minutes. But, you know, once they gave it up to Sally's and then couldn't win a face-off the rest of the quarter. And before you know it, you're down 10, nothing after one quarter. So, I think it's, I think that's going to be the key battle for Archmer tomorrow. Can O'Neill come away with some early face-off wins and maybe give Archmer some momentum with some early goals? But you know that that's going to be the key for the Hawks tomorrow. Can they can can they stop or slow down Riley from winning face-offs all day long? So just just to touch on both of those guys, um, I mean Sal, Sally's has played some. Very competitive teams. We talked about it with the, the three national powerhouses they played this this year. And um, Jason, you're right. You got to keep the ball away from Sally's because um, if not, they're going to put up a lot of point, a lot of goals on you. So, you know, it's it's going to come down to the faceoffs. But I think the biggest difference here is the fact that Plesianum just has played a lot tougher schedule um, and has proved that they can play with those talents too. And I think they're just going to be too much for Tower Hill. And now guys, let me ask you this, not, not to pick winners. We're not going to do that, but I'm asking you what matchup or potential championship matchup maybe excites you the most, or what two teams would you like to see battle for that final on Thursday? Um, Jay, if I'd ask you first, what do you think? Wow. I mean, to me, I, the top half, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm with Nick earlier. Uh, I, I probably favor Cape Hell open a little bit in that game because of experience, but that could go either way. And, and, um, uh, I could see easily see Sanford there as, as well as Cape Hell open. Uh, the bottom half, is, you know, plays the end. looks like they're, they're probably gonna, you know, head to the finals. Uh, but like Mike said, they're, they can't get complacent and they, uh, you know, play their game. Um, but I, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Sally's Cape in, in a rematch of the last uh, spring sports championship uh, two years ago. But uh, uh, you know, I think Sanford can easily easily get get in there too. But I'm leaning towards Cape on Loop and Sally. Yeah, Nick. Without picking a winner, I would. I actually would love to see Sally's Yanum and, and Sanford. It's from but just from an entertainment standpoint. I think that, the, to me, they're the two most aggressive offenses of the, of the two of the four that are still left. Uh, I'd love to see how the Sal's do against the team they haven't played mm-hmm. and, uh, and the team of the caliber of, of Sanford. That's nothing against Archmere or Cape. Uh, just, you're asking me which one I think would be the, the most fun to watch. and I, I would love to see Sally's and Sanford go at it. Yeah, that would be it, a good I, one for sure. Nick, what about you? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Mike just because we've already seen the other matchups, right? I mean, none of us have seen Sanford and Sally's play. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure that that's the way it's going to go, but it'd be nice to see someone in there a little different. And, and everyone loves to root for the underdog, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not picking any winners, but, but um, I mean, who wouldn't want to see Sally's Cape battle it out? Me and Jason and uh, – uh, me and Mike and um, Scott Cameron got to do that game, and uh, that was just a great game. Just Cape was down four goals, came back, and you win with nine seconds. So I don't think you can you can go wrong either way. And I'm not discounting Archmere. I mean, uh, no. yeah, I'm not discounting Archmere either, but you got to get through that powerhouse alleys. So. Yeah, and Nick, I've seen Archmere several times this year. I mean, probably a half dozen times, and uh, that's a really, really good team. And if they somehow upset Toys Ham tomorrow, uh, I wouldn't put anything past him in the final. Uh, I would not want to play Archmere in a final. That's that's a team with a lot of beef, and uh, and, and they're gonna, if, they, if they get through salaries, they're going to have a big chip on their shoulder uh, on Thursday night because nobody expects them oh, yeah. to be there. So that you know, oh, yeah. and if you mentioned different teams, Archmere would be a different team to see in the final. And that would be something else. 
and there's been a lot of talk uh, about splitting up the divisions, and, and, and the talk came up again after you know some of these uh, quarterfinal scores and, and results. But I mean, you have two. Di- you would technically have two Division two teams and technically two Division one teams. So uh, to me, I you know I don't I don't think you need two divisions in lacrosse right now uh, because you know you have the Archmers, the Sanfords, uh, Tower Hills who are normally good. You got uh, friends who, who's there. So I, I think a lot of people probably saw the scores of the game and have been, I've seen it on Twitter and Facebook, uh, asking the DIAA, why not two divisions for lacrosse? And that's, but if you look at it, you know, realistically, you have, you know, a division, two division, two teams in Archmer and Sanford, and you have two division one teams in Slaziana and Cape Henlopen. Yeah, so there you have it. Our semifinal matchups against Sanford at Cape Henlope, and that game is at Sanford tomorrow at 5 o'clock. And then Sally's and Archmere, the two-versus-three matchup at Sally's at 7 p.m. And again, your finals are set for Thursday, May 27th at Dover High School. So big things in boys lacrosse. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at softball. One of, again, one of the most impressive seasons we've seen across the board just in terms of overall performance and the way these teams have been playing, you know, despite COVID-19 restrictions and, you know, what else, but a phenomenal season, very competitive and guys, just to get started quickly, big games on Saturday. Um takeaways from softball, anything that stuck out to you from this past weekend's games? Uh Jay, I'll start with you. Uh, how, about, how about that Middletown team uh, going down to Sussex Tech and putting 17 runs up off the board in a uh, in a uh, wild wild uh, game with there with uh, Sussex Tech? Everyone was looking forward to the Caravel Sussex Tech uh, match up down the road, but instead we're going to get Caravel Middletown. And you know, before you went on the air, you asked, you know, what games I thought would be good that weekend. Uh, uh, tomorrow and, and that could be one of them uh middletown has really put up the offense in the second half of the season and uh you know a fun hitting team and uh you know they're going to go up against caravel's great pitching and defense and and let's see uh who wins out but uh what an impressive forward from middletown 17 runs and they uh you rarely see in a, in a softball game especially uh uh you know in a round of 16 game like that so and, you know it's going to be interesting, but uh, that was my takeaway from the weekend. Uh, you know, seventeen runs. Look at Laurel. Um, yeah, they 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 got by Archmere seven to nothing. I talked to Coach Dan Pizzani of Archmere saw him on Saturday, and he said, you know, the Hawks were in it until um, late in the game. Laurel stopped trying to hit home runs and went back to slapping the ball and playing small ball. Uh, they got St. Marsh. And we, you know, St. Mark's has, has great pitching, but, um, you know, they, they, uh, Laurel again, um, you know, St. Mark's held that pretty competitive. Was we could expect that late in the playoffs, but this sets up uh, Laurel Smyrna three. Uh, I'm thinking that's going to be a, a a good battle this time down in Laurel instead of uh, at at Smyrna. And uh, to me, that game is really which offense shows up. There's two teams that have struggled to to score runs lately. Um, and the, the quality uh, pitching is going to be really good with Peyton Dixon for for Smyrna. Uh, so we'll see if Laurel can can get by Smyrna a little bit, step up competition wise for them. Uh, but I think that that's going to be a real good one. Absolutely, and Nick, I know you had track all day Saturday, getting those track championships uh, live stream. You had a chance to catch up on um, on any softball this past weekend. I mean, the takeaway for me was the Middletown score. You know, obviously. Me and Glenn were down there, and we were trying to keep up with with the the yeah. games and the stuff that was going on. Um, the biggest upset for us was Middletown, obviously. Um, but man, there's so much good, so many good pitchers in our state this this year that are carrying a lot of these teams, and it's going to be exciting with some of these next round games, and then going into into the semis. It's going to be exciting, and if you are a softball fan, there's some serious talent from freshmen. All the way up to seniors out there, and the and, and uh, the pitchers are just outstanding. I mean, Frost going 21 straight strikeouts in a perfect game. I mean, it's going to be exciting softball. So get out there and watch if you can. Absolutely. And now just to just to catch everyone up to date here in the top half of our bracket in the 
quarterfinals. It's Sussex Central against Appaquinimic. Sussex Central coming off a big win over Padua and, and Appaquinimic a 4 nothing win over Red Line to earn them spot, or their spot in the quarterfinals. Mike alluded to the victory by Laurel, 5 nothing over St. Mark's, and that's where they'll also get a team we just talked about, Smyrna, who got a one nothing victory over Newark Charter to get a chance to play Laurel in the quarterfinals. Caravel beat Seifert, 10 to nothing. Middletown, Jay, you talked about it, 17 runs. They went 17 to 12 over the Ravens, who were hoping to go to the quarterfinals as well. Delaware Military Academy, another shutout on the board, 5 to nothing. Grayson Frost, electric in that one. And then Caesar Rodney, a 3 2 win over Delmarva Christian, a team a lot of us talked about to watch out for earlier in some of our episodes. And Caesar Rodney gets a big win, 3 to 2 there. They'll face DMA. So, again, great quarterfinal matchups. Um, again, they are scheduled for tomorrow. Um, if I had to ask you guys, what quarterfinal matchup excites you the most? Uh, I'll, yeah, it's probably Laurel for Smyrna Part Three. You know, uh, but you know, I, I, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm also looking uh, uh, forward to and you know, Caesar Rodney, like you said, a nice three-two win over Delmarva Christian. But now they have to go up against Frost who uh, I believe hasn't given up a hit all tournament long. And like Nick said, she threw a perfect game with 21 strikeouts uh, against you know, Polytech earlier in the tournament. So, um, you know, that's going to be a tough matchup for Cesar Rodney. But uh, one that could be interesting because I've seen Cesar Rodney and they, they can hit the ball. Um, so yeah, I think that could be one of those games that were, it might be closer than people think. And, but yeah, the I think the the game tomorrow is definitely going to be at Laurel, uh, Smyrna Laurel Part Three, and you know both teams, uh, you know, are, are trying to punch their tickets to the semifinals, and you know they've faced each other twice before, so you know it's Part Three, and sometimes when you face a team uh, three times, it's hard to beat them three times. So you know, does that come into play at all? Yeah, Mike. I'd like to see. Uh, I want to see how Apo does against uh, Slayfield from Central. She, you know, we talked before. But she doesn't really uh, seem like a freshman uh, as, as well. As she's done her freshman season. But I like to see how uh, how Apo does. They have to make the trip down to uh, Central, but we'll see if they can get the bats warmed up a little bit. You know, Redline's a good team. <clears throat> they put four up against Redline. They're going to need probably gonna need at least four against. Uh, Sussex Central, and not too many teams have done that this year. Nick, what matchup excites you the most? Well, I mean, I think it. Go, I think it. You know, goes back to again the the Laurel Smyrna matchup three. You know, um, um, but you know, you don't know how that's gonna. Ha- you know, how that's gonna end the way it did. They went extra innings in a you know play play game, which didn't count, but. uh it was the Henlopen Conference Championship. Uh, so we'll see how, how they do. I mean, both teams are playing well. Um, and is it easy to beat a team three times? Um, and I believe the last game was in Smyrna, if I'm correct. So now Smyrna has to go to Laurel. So, you know, home field advantage. Um, but either either way, um, you know, I'm intrigued by all of them and waiting to see what the semifinals bring to us because if all the teams advance, you know, that the higher seeds, it's going to have some tremendous pitching matchups coming in, in this, in the semifinals of the softball. For sure. And just to maybe put a bell on this conversation real quickly, guys, um, we're in the quarterfinals, obviously some great matchups and we've been keeping up with it all year long after you or after seeing the first couple games of the tournament and seeing how teams are playing right now, what team do you think maybe would be your favorite to win the state championship at this point in the quarterfinals? Well, I want to go DMA just because of Grace and Frost, not only because of her, but primarily because of Frost. And she just, uh, she's been on literally unhittable lately. So I'm going with the Seahawks. Cool, man. This is tough. Uh, dad, the DMA is a good pick, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Golden Knights and Sussex Central. Um, I just think they're better offensively. Uh, you know, they put up a lot of runs this year, over 130 runs during the season. Gave up, I think, like eight or nine. Uh, so they can score a lot. They don't give up much. Um, 
So I, I would probably I'm gonna favor them because of their bats. But uh, I think any I think any one of these eight teams you, you could see holding the the championship on Saturday, the trophy on Saturday. But uh, if I had to lean one, I, I'd, I'd give the top seed Golden Knights. Uh man, <laughs> the 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 distance between some of these top, these top four teams, top teams that are still playing right now, is very very small. And you know, you can have an argument probably for three or four of them. Um, I I I honestly have only seen such a central on film. I haven't seen them live, but I would have to give the edge to DMA right now. Um, I think they just have a good all-around team, and and Frost I think is the difference here. They have good catching, good hitting, good field play. They got a great coach. Not to take anything from anywhere else. Um, I would have to give the edge to DMA, but we're talking very, very, very small edge. Yeah, for sure. I mean, every team left. You mentioned it, Jason has a great shot. All these teams have been playing well, so are playing well all year long, and we talked about it all year long, the fact that maybe one of the most competitive seasons we've seen in some time this year in softball, and I know I think I'm leaning towards DMA and Great. Sussex Central maybe meeting up. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good competition, believe me. So again, your quarterfinal matchups are tomorrow, Sussex Central and Appa will be at Sussex Central, 4 o'clock, Laurel and Smyrna at Laurel this time around for part three, 4 o'clock, Caravel and Middletown, they're at 5 o'clock, I believe, at Caravel, And then DMA and Cesar Rodney at DMA at 4 o'clock. So that is your game set for tomorrow in the quarterfinals. And the semifinals, that will be on Thursday. All right, and now we're done softball conversation. Time to move right into our next sport, and that is our Boys Baseball State Championship. We are on to the quarterfinals. They are set for tomorrow. Quickly to run through it. Game number one, Caravel at Salesianum. Sally's at 4 p.m. So, again, Caravel, we'll talk about it in a second, but a big-time win for the Buccaneers, 8-6 to six over the top seed in the tournament, and that was a very talented St. George's squad. So that's your first quarterfinal matchup. Tower Hill, they get a 9-5 to five victory over Lake Forest, and they'll meet up with the DMA, who got a 9-2 to two victory over Dover. That's your second matchup in the quarterfinals. And then your third one, Sussex Tech. The Ravens continuing their great season. They get a 5 nothing win over Middletown. And then Apoquinimic, they beat Conrad. And again, that was a great matchup to have early on in the tournament, Apo and Conrad. But Apo, they're starting to show up now. 9 to nothing victory over that squad. And then St. Mark's and Indian River. And what was Indian River? A great first-round matchup for them with a big win over Archmere. And then they take St. Mark's to the brink. St. Mark's walks off 2-1 to one in a victory over IR to earn themselves a spot in the quarterfinals where they'll meet up with Smyrna. That game is at Frawley at 4 p.m. Smyrna gets the win 13-7. Uh, 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 Nick, yes. Nick, quick. Uh, it looks like uh, I just up. Uh, it looks like the bracket just got updated and they moved that game to St. Mark's at 4 p.m. Oh, well, there we go. And that's why... Everybody needs you guys. Game at St. Mark's at 4 p.m. So right there, there you have it. They'll take on Smyrna. So you guys know the quarterfinal matchups. Um, Jay, we just heard from you. Just continue this uh, conversation. Um, what did you see out of those round two matchups on Saturday? And um, what are you looking forward to uh, tomorrow? Well, you, you saw some uh, teams like St. Mark's, you know, get a, a, a walk-off win against Indian River, uh, you know, two to one in a game where I believe Comrie started and, and Quinn came in and finished and, uh, you know, they got the walk off, uh, win, but that Smyrna team, you know, they go and they beat Delmar and Sussex Central. And, you know, the last two times they played they they got really hot at the end of the year. They're, they're, they're clicking at the right time. They played St. Mark's earlier. Mike can attest to it. It went 10 innings. Uh, last time they played before St. Mark's got the walk off win. Um, so I, you know, I, I think that game is going to be a lot closer than, than people probably think because they, they probably see the, the seed 22 seed on Smyrna, <laughs> but, uh, I think they're better than the 22 seed. And I, I think that one's going to be a real good game. The thing about St. Mark's is they've been in a lot of close games and, and they've pulled a lot of them out. They've also lost a couple, but they've, they've been in those close games. Um, and I, I think they know how to win close games. 
uh, for the most part, but uh, that's going to be interesting. But the team um, that really has surprised me come tournament time is Apo. I mean, Apo, you know, had a, a great middle stretch, but they came into the tournament uh, losing their last couple games, um, including to that red hot Caravel team in St. George's. Uh, but not their last two straight losses to go in the tournament, and they, and they didn't have an easy road. They they fought Caesar Rodney in the first round, and then like you said, that matchup against Conrad to beat Conrad nine nothing um, makes me think that Apo Apo knows it's uh, tournament time, and, and they want to defend the, their crown from two years ago. So uh, a lot a lot to take away from the bottom half, but. You know, and a trip to Georgetown is not going to be easy for him tomorrow uh, going down to Sussex Tech and playing. But, uh, you know, uh, I want to count Apo out right now. And, Mike, what about you? Uh, this past weekend, a lot going on in baseball. Um, what are you excited for coming up in the quarterfinals? What stuck out to you this past weekend? Well, I, I was at uh, Louisiana watching them play Cape Henlopen, and Cape started uh, Gage Joseph, their starting pitcher, as a freshman. And he shut the South down into the fifth inning. And he got some great help from his defense. There's some double plays and a lot of uh, long fly balls that were out because, you know, there's no fence. Um, but these guys were catching – their outfielders were catching up to these balls that were hit a mile. So I was really impressed with Cape. Uh, the South just kind of turned it on at the end and, and took advantage of some walks and some oppor- I mean, error and some opportunities. So uh, that was a really good one. Uh, how about – Tower Hill, you know, people make the fun of Tower because their schedule wasn't the best. But here they are in the quarterfinals. Now they're going to have their hands full against DMA. But, uh, hey, they're there. You know, that's what, <laughs> when you look at it, Tower Hill's there. They're hosting team. They're hosting the game tomorrow. So, uh, congratulations to the Hillers. Uh, another fine ac- athletic season for, for Tower Hill. Quietly, they just put solid seasons together in just about every sport. So that should be uh, – Jay looked at the other half of the bracket, but looking at that top half, um, it should be a good one. I'm looking forward. I think that South Caravelle game could be outstanding. Nick, big t- big matchups coming up. We're getting to that time where it's almost time for our Final Four and championship just around the corner. Um, what have you seen so far in the tournament? I mean, just like everybody else, I mean, look at Caravelle, look at Smyrna, um, some of these teams that – have been, you know, somewhat kind of under the radar as you talk about the bigger, you know, the bigger names like St. Mark's, DMA, Apo, um, Sussex Tech, you know, um, these guys have, have gotten in and showed that they can play, um, scoring a lot of runs, you know, not, not a lot of the talked about with their top, with their top pitchers around the state, but look at what they've done now that they've gotten into the tournament. Um, so, you know, um, it's going to be interesting. Some of these games, I mean, I'm looking really, I'm looking forward to that Caravelle Slesianum game. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to see it, but that's one that really interests me. Um, you know, Tower Hill, they're there. If, they're getting, if they can compete with DMA, um, you know, Sussex Tech's had a great year. And like Jason said, Apo's getting hot. Um, they're, you know, they, like you, like Jason said, they won the state championship a couple of seasons. You know, we didn't get to have it because of COVID. And, uh, yeah, they did have a couple of games they lost towards the end of the season. But when you get into the playoffs, it's a clean slate. You got a 0-0 record. And uh, they have a lot of talent down there, we know, uh, with, with Bolden and Fleming and, and uh, Lorenzo. Um, you know, and then you got St. Mark's. So, St. Mark's is who they are, and they have two good pitchers. And obviously, I think Quinn will be going tomorrow for them, or yeah, tomorrow because I don't, I don't think Colmery can pitch after throwing Saturday. Um, but they face a hot Samaritan team that's putting up double digit runs. It's interesting. It's going to be, and it's going to come down to timely hitting and and good pitching. And uh, honestly, I mean, you you can pick any game this week, and I think it's going to be interesting. For sure, definitely going with the theme of one of the most competitive seasons still that we've seen in a while, both baseball and softball. And now we just went over the quarterfinal matchups. And if I had to ask you guys, again, not picking a winner here in the quarterfinals, but what semifinal potential matchup excites you guys the most that you maybe or would love to see on Thursday? 
Nick, uh, let's start with you first here. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, um, you know, you, you, I look at it and, I, and you know, just because of their names and, and their records and their history, matter of fact, congratulations to Matt, Matt Smith Smitty at, at uh, uh, St. Marsh for getting his 400th win. Congratulations to him. Um, but, I, you know, I'd like to see St. Mark's Apo. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to see St. Mark's and Sussex Tech because of how good that Sussex Tech has played this year and, uh, you know, kind of wanting to see them because I haven't really got to see them live either. But, um, you know, DMA Sally's. I mean, it just jumps out at you because of the name and the history. Um, but, but what about if Caravel stays hot and they, they get to face the DMA team or, or, or if Tower Hill pulls off the upset? Um, but those are mine just jumping off the page of me as I'm looking at the brackets right now. Um, interesting. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I probably would like to see St. Mark's and Apo to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, I think that was going to be mine too, St. Mark's and Apo. And I mean, you mentioned DMA and Carabell and Carabell hit that grand slam to beat DMA not that long ago. Is that the game that, that happened, right? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Correct. Yeah. That's right. So, Forgot about oof, that. It's some great stuff. Yeah. Uh, Jason, to come to you now, what potential uh, matchup in the semifinals that are you maybe hoping to see? Well, like Nick said, there's a lot of good potentials out there. Uh, I would, I, I think, I, personally, I'd I like to see uh, DMA, uh, Louisiana. I believe uh, Walker would 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 pitch in that potential semifinal game, and and you know he throws the ball hard, and and then you. Uh, you know, he goes up against that Slazy Animal offense that can just mash the ball. Um, like Mike said, uh, they, even their outs are long, loud, you know, outs, and, you know, they don't strike out much. They put the ball in play. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on the defense. And the you know, same thing with DMA. DMA's offense, um, we saw him put up 20 runs against uh, Dover this year, and, you know, uh, they they can they can hit too. I think that 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 matchup could be very intriguing, and one that I like to see because uh, we mentioned earlier in lacrosse, you know something new of Sanford Slazy M. Sally's DMA did not play this year, um, so that would not be a, a rematch like some of these other potential matchups could be, and, and and I think that one could be very interesting. But I think they all I, I, it doesn't matter what semifinal you have. Uh, I just think they're all, you know, loaded uh, with a lot, lots of talents and uh, games that could probably go either way. Uh, you know, we have some of, some of the hottest teams remaining in this tournament. Yeah, Nick, I'm going to stay away from Sally's because my nephew's on that team. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a tough one. But I'm looking at the other side. I would and nothing against Sappo. How about at St. Mark's with? Uh, Christian Colmary pitching against those mashers on Sussex Tech. Uh, unbelievable game. I think that would be a great uh, matchup to watch Colmary against uh, Stokely and, and Shockley and those guys. Um, it would be an outstanding um, mono a mono for those guys, and uh, that would be something else. But if you look at Apo St. Mark's, uh, you know, the Apple came into St. Marsh and beat them toward the end of the season. I'm sure I know that they haven't forgotten that at St. Marsh. They're probably looking for revenge if, if they get by Smyrna. And they, like, I was at that Smyrna St. Marsh game the first time, and that wasn't a give until the bottom of the 10th inning. So it's, uh, it's, you know, they have to get through tomorrow first. But how about Christian Colmary against the big bad Sussex Tech Ravens? Some really great potential matchups all across the board this year in our baseball quarterfinals, potential semifinal matchups. And as we wrap up our baseball talk, guys, like we said, we're into the quarterfinals. We've seen all the teams and how they played so far in this year's tournament. Um, Jay, I'm going to come to you first. What team, if I had to put you on the spot right now, who do you think um, has the momentum to win a championship? Oh, wow. <laughs> you had to put me first. Um you know, baseball, especially this time of year, you know, you you got to put pitch counts there right now. And I, to me, you have to go with the team that has the best overall pitching staff. And and to me, I think of the remaining teams, teams the deepest pitching staff is St. Mark's. So, um, 
and, you know, I think if it comes down to pitching and Schmidt can get those right matchups, um, he's also deep. I mean, Comer threw 105 pitches the other day. So if I'm correct, Mike, even if he pitches in, in the, the semifinals on Thursday, he's only got 100 left because I think he had 205 in a yeah. seven-day rolling uh, rolling thing. So, I mean, these pitch counts are very important, and it's going to come down. So, to me, I like a team that has pitching depth, and of these remaining teams, I think St. Mark's has the most depth of them all. Um, so, I think they all are – you know, have deep pitching staffs, but if you ask me who's the deepest and if I had to choose a team, it would be St. Mark's. But uh, I think anyone, like I said earlier in every other sport, I think any one of these eight teams could be in the final, uh, finals. That's how good they, they've been all year. And, Mike, now I'm going to come to you, but you cannot choose Sally's just because <laughs> your nephew's on the team. So you have seven choices, um, even if Sally's is your choice, who maybe you know your second choice. But who do you think um, has the is hot right now? Has the momentum here in the quarters that you could see maybe holding up that trophy on Saturday? Well, when you you talk about momentum, this is this is objective. Louisiana's so got some momentum. You know, they had they had the big comeback win against Cape. They're playing at home uh, tomorrow. They they uh, you know they so they get a little advantage there Thursday if they play DMA. It's going to be at Crawley Stadium, so they don't have to play, I guess, at Newark National. So that kind of favors the Sals. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to play Apo. Jason mentioned earlier they got hot at the right time after the drop in the couple at the end of the regular season. So, you know, they, they've won two in the tournament so far. They beat a really good pitcher in Bredon Shearer. So um, I would not want to play Apo. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm not Sussex Tech, so I don't have to play Apo. So, but that's that's going to be a, that's a team I would not want to face. All right, Nick. Here we go. Quarterfinals. Eight teams left. Who's it going to be? <laughs> I I think I'm going to switch gears after listening to to Jason and Mike and everybody talk about it. And um, after he brought up the pitch counts, it it just goes to show you with three games in two, four, six days that you might have to use some people that you haven't used all season coaching. And you might have it be an offensive championship versus a defensive championship and come down to the pitching. And and I could be wrong, but some of these teams that got the hot bats right now, Caravelle, Sussex Tech, I mean, the big, you know, uh, Smyrna, um, it's going to be really, really interesting. And, and I know what we're all looking at and thinking, hey, man, you know, DMA, uh, deep pitching. Um, of course, St. Mark's with Colmary and Quinn. But those guys may not come into it. Or if they do, they might not have um, a big play in it with, three, with these three games in six days. Um, and it might come down to some offense this season. So um, I don't know, man. I, I, it's a, it's a, let's just say it's a great season to be a fan and to be, um, I mean, DMA, Apo, Tech, St. Mark's, and it's, it's Slazy Adam too. They're, they're, you know, they're well coached. I mean, oh man, it's, it's, this has got to be one of the toughest years, um, and having to do something like this and pick a team. Um, you know, but, uh, man, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I could see three or four of these teams, maybe even five or six of them. If some of these underdogs can win coming through, um, St. Mark's Apo DMA really stick out to me. Um, I think I, and I honestly not saying this, uh, I don't have a favorite in it, this at all, but when you look at all around, um, Apo has some good pitching, some strong hitters in the middle of the lineup. They did get some work from the bottom of their lineup. St. Mark's has obviously had a straight, uh, real good pitching top of the lineup. But I think DMA has a full squad um, that, that can compete for this championship, and I wouldn't count them out this year. And, Nick, I know you got to run. Any last words uh, before you get out of here? It is such – it is so awesome to just be getting through what we've gotten through with this pandemic 
having these kids, uh, these athletes back on the field to have this spring. Um, you know, I love fall. I love winter too. And I love spring, uh, but deep, deep entrenched. I'm really a big baseball fan. So spring sports are, or, uh, are one of my favorites, but it's so nice to be able to, to, to have these events going on after what happened last year and those kids had to lose their seasons. And, uh, um, you know, I'm just glad that we're moving forward as, as a, as the whole world, you know, and getting us out of this. So, um, kudos and shout out to everybody that's helped for that happen. Um, and, uh, I'm glad we got to see these kids this year. Some absolutely great matchups in the quarters. Again, Caravel at Slazianum, 4 o'clock tomorrow. Tower Hill at DMA at Tower Hill at 4 o'clock. Sussex Tech at Apo, that game is down at Sussex Tech at 4. And then St. Mark's at Smyrna, now playing at St. Mark's at 4 o'clock. So some great ones and potentially some great semifinal matchups on Thursday. And again, the championship game will be on Saturday if the rain uh, is able to hold up. Um, so that's going to do it on our baseball talk. We've gotten through boys lacrosse, softball, and now baseball. And Nick Halliday has got to get up out of here. So I want to say a special thanks to Nick. And we're going to take a uh, short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little girls lacrosse and girls soccer as we are in the semifinals of both of those two sports. And just a reminder, we have some great games coming your way on the NFHS Network, powered by Delaware Live Sports, on Tuesday afternoon. It all gets started with Sanford and Cape Lacrosse. That game is at 5 o'clock. And then D1 Soccer, Padua and Charter, that game at 4 o'clock. And then more lacrosse, Sally's versus Archmere at 7 o'clock. And then your D2 Soccer semifinal, Apo and Smyrna at 6 o'clock. Four great games coming your way on Tuesday evening on the NFHS Network, powered by Delaware. Delaware Live Sports. And welcome back inside Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison Drew now joined by Jason Winchell and Mike Lang, continuing our spring sports postseason talk as we are advancing in two sports that we are now in the semifinals of. And one of them is the girls lacrosse championships. The semifinal scheduled for tomorrow. It's Tattnall coming off a 17 to 8 win over Caribou. They're your top seed. They get Wilmington Friends, your four seed with a 16 to 15 win or excuse me 15 to 14 win I believe over Archmere they earn their spot so one verse four in the first semi and then K Penlope in the two seed gets a 17 to 7 win over Sussex Academy they earn themselves a spot in the semis and then Ursuline with a win over Tower Hill in overtime we'll talk about that in a second and Ursuline gets the uh, win they're the three seed so it's almost chalk here or is chalk one verse four and two versus three here guys in our lacrosse girls semifinals um just to recap what you've seen so far, um, Jay, to get things started and how things are going so far in this girls' uh, lacrosse championship. Yeah, and like we said, uh, what are what are two great uh, semifinal games for uh, fans tomorrow of girls' lacrosse, uh, you know, and, and some rematches of regular season play. But, you know, we saw some good games. Uh, Mike and I were, got a chance to see that friends Archmer game that was highly entertaining. Um, you know, and the score says 16-14, Nick. It could have easily been 32-30. to 30. I mean, both goaltenders throw on their head in that game. A uh, lot of action. A uh, lot, you know, it was, it was a fun game to be at. Um, and then you got a team like Arsenal who, who played a very good Tower Hill team, you know, and needed overtime to get by Tower Hill, Um you know, and that sets up a rematch with Cape Henlope, but who they only lost to by one goal earlier in the year. And, you know, Friends and Tatnell uh, played twice in the regular season. And both were, you know, really competitive games. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to have a, you know, when you think of girls across, you probably didn't expect it, but you're, you're going to see either a Tatnell or one week of Friends in the final. And, you know, it wouldn't shock me. It would not shock me this year if, if Cape Henlope and, uh, gets defeated, um, you know, and that, that's saying a lot because Cape Henlopen wins every year, uh, <laughs> at least the last decade plus, you know. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow and, and, and see, you know, ha what two teams make to the final on Thursday night. But uh, it's been a good tournament so far, a lot of competitive games. I mean, even look at 7-10, Sussex Academy 12-11, um, Archmer beat Sanford in the first round, a 5-12 matchup, and Archmer needed overtime 12-11 to, to get it done. So, 
Uh, unlike the boys lacrosse, I think girls lacrosse have been really competitive uh, this state tournament. Yeah, and Jay, you mentioned K Penlopen. They are looking again for their twelfth consecutive uh, state championship. So that, I mean, unbelievable. They've won every title since two thousand and nine. So just a remarkable accomplishment there. And they're going to look to do that, Mike. And they're going to have to take on Ursuline. And Ursuline, what a victory uh, they had over Tower Hill. Yeah, I seen the. I didn't get to see that one. Uh, unfortunately, uh, just too much going on Saturday. I couldn't be. Uh, could be everywhere, but I, I saw their game before that, and I know those girls pretty well, and and it's a very talented team. They're they're uh, they've got nationally coached and Coach Barnhill. Uh, you know they like Jason said they were they came within a whisker beating Cape the last time that was up at Servium uh, Field. They're gonna have to play it at Cape Henlopen, and uh, this time. But uh, that, to me, that's that's almost a toss-up. I'd give a slight edge to Cape just because of the experience and the home field. But it, it should be outstanding. And you, like you mentioned, the boys' games, unfortunately, just were not close. But the girls' games have been have been nail biters almost across the board, and it's been a lot of fun to watch. And Mike, now here for girls across. Um, we have our semis. We have our final four: Tattnall versus Wilmington Friends, Cape versus Ursuline. Mike, what matchup, um, again, we're not going to pick, but what matchup would you like to see or maybe would be the most exciting matchup to you? Well, I think the most exciting matchup would be Tattnall and Cape Hemlope. And I think uh, I did see Tattnall this year. Uh, they're very aggressive, very fast. Uh, their face-off, they, they win almost every face-off. They have a, a girl, I can't remember, I don't have the roster in front of me, but uh with one of the taller girls you'll see playing in girls across this reaches above everybody and snags faceoffs and gets them started. And they, they don't make many mistakes and, um, and they don't waste time. They go down and they, they shoot. So I'd love to see, uh, you know, I think Patton would, would be an exciting team for people to get to see on a statewide uh, stage. So um, we'll see what happens with friends. It's not like Jason said, play a team three times in a year. They know you. There's no surprises. So they're going to have to get through the Quakers first. And friends have some girls who can score. We saw that the other day. They put up 16 against Archmere. So, uh, but I think Tattnall Cape would be a very exciting final. For sure. Now, Jay, over to you. Um, what potential matchup in the finals um, on Thursday that maybe you're looking to see? Well, I agree with Mike. Um, I really want to see Cape Tattnall uh, just because uh, it would be a, a, a new game, uh, you know, a new – they didn't play during the year. Um, but, you know, I would also like to see Ursuline Tattnall in, in a potential rematch. I was at the first game, and that was a back-and-forth game all afternoon until Tattnall got, got on a run late. Uh, and probably two of the better face-offs – girls in the state, like Mike said, Tatnell had the, the size advantage, but Arsenal did a good job of holding their own and winning some of the face-offs, and that's why they were able to, to stay in the game as long as they did until Tatnell, Tatnell won like four of the last five face-offs and, and pulled away late in that game, but I, I would like to see that one, I think, uh, again, because I think uh, it could be really competitive, but I'm with Mike. If I had to choose one, I would really love to see the uh, Tatnell Cape um, uh, Hellopen uh, matchup. There you go. Semifinals again are tomorrow. Tattnall versus Wilmington Friends and Cape Hellopen versus Ursuline with the finals being on Thursday scheduled for a 5.30 start at Dover High School. And now that takes us to our last spring sport. They are also in the semifinals. We got two divisions, Division One and Division Two of the Girls Soccer State Championship. And guys, we're going to start with Division One in, in both of these divisions, and actually we've got a pair of returning or defending state champions in Division One. It's going to be the defending state champs in Padua. They're going to take on the four seed Wilmington Charter, and Padua advance with a seven nil victory over Concord. Wilmington Charter, the force, get the narrow one nil victory over Middletown. That's your first semifinal matchup. Again, scheduled for tomorrow at four o'clock, and then Appaquinimic with a five nil victory over Polytech. Apo, your two seed, and then they will play host to Smyrna, who won four nil over Caesar Rodney. That game tomorrow at six o'clock at Appaquinimic, and. 
Pat, are they been on fire? Defending state champions, a 7-0 victory. Um, Mike, is is it Pat Padua the big favorite here? Or is there a team out there that can maybe put, uh, put an end to their run? Well, I think Charter could. Um, I don't think they will, but this is a it's a different Padua team. It's it's a different vibe around the team, but the talent is, is still there, and uh, you know they're they're just so talented up front. Um, it's going to be I think it's going to be hard for Charter. They played a couple weeks ago. I was there. It was three nothing Padua. Uh, I just I just don't see anybody stopping the Pandas this year. They they just look like they're on a mission, and um, it's going to be a tough uh, tough road for anybody against Padua for Charter um, tomorrow, and then either uh, uh, Smyrna or uh, Apo. But Padua is just they're outstanding. And Jay, how do you see this Division One bracket playing out now that uh, we have the semifinals uh, set for tomorrow? Yeah, I'm kind of with Mike. It's it's paddle was to lose, uh, but I I did see Apo paddle the first time, and Apo scored uh, first, and I think that's what a team's going to have to do is score first, and then you know find a way to uh, keep that paddle offense down. The problem is, can you keep that paddle offense down for 80 minutes? And only one team has done that so far this year, and that was St. Mark's. Um, so Carroll, uh, I believe Mike held them to one goal in, in a in a one nothing loss. Um, so you know if you are a team that can that that can get an early goal and and maybe you know just you know play solid defense and maybe it's a, a day where Padua's shots are not falling. We saw that in the state final a few years ago with Middletown they got the early early lead, Mike, and even though Padua dominated a lot of their shots. They missed a, a few shots high and wide. They missed, um, and then the Middletown goalie stood on the head, their head, and, and Middletown walked out state champions. That's that's the kind of thing I think these other three teams are going to need to beat a Padua. They're going to have to get an early goal and then get some great goaltending and, and, and a little bit of luck. Uh, I know they're probably not – no one wants to hear, but – there's nothing wrong with being lucky, you know, in a game, uh, especially when you're an underdog. Um, so it, it, I, I think it's paddle was to lose, but it wouldn't shock me if we saw Apo, Smyrna, or Wilmington Charter, uh, you know, get an early goal on them and, and maybe take it from them. But uh, they're going to have to take it and they're going to have to earn it. Uh, and I'm sure Padawan knows that. Padawan wants to play. Uh, Padua wants to try and get an early lead uh, and make every other team chase them. Uh, but I think, you know, like I said, Padua's to lose. But if someone could get an early goal and some hot goaltending, uh, I wouldn't say it would be a total shocker to see one of those teams win. So there you have it, a little summary of Division One. <clears throat> Again, the semifinals scheduled for tomorrow, Padua Wilmington Charter at 4 o'clock at Abyssinio Stadium and Apoquinimic and Smyrna at Apo at 6 p.m. And we'll actually be bringing you that game live on Delaware Live Sports. We have a couple of them we'll get to or that you'll hear about that we're bringing to you live. And the finals will be June 1st at Caesar Rodney High School for Division One. So now we go down, take a look at our Division Two state championship bracket in the semis. We go and almost similar to what we saw in Division One, Caravelle, your number one seed and defending state champs, have advanced to the semis, but they get a narrow two to one victory over Sussex Academy, and then Indian River as the four seed advances to the semifinals with a four to one win over Ursuline. Down at the bottom side of the bracket, St. Mark's, your number two seed, gets a 3-0 victory over DMA to earn a spot in the semifinals, and that's where they'll meet the three seed, Archmere, a big 7-1 victory over Wilmington Friends. So, guys, there you have it for Division Two. Um, anything that stood out to you in that bracket so far and anything maybe you're looking forward to? Jay, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, to me, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to see Carroll St. Mark's for the first time this year. Uh, in the championship, but I, I will tell you this, they're both going to have to earn their way there. Uh, this Indian River team is one of the hottest teams in the state, uh, and they were able to defeat Ursula the other day, 4-1. to one. Uh, You know, I, I think they're playing really good. Caravelle, you know, uh, had to had to come back 
uh, trailing one off, but was able to come back and beat Stuff Academy two to one. Um, you know, I think you know, like I said, I'd love to see Caraval St. Mark's, but I think St. Mark's and Caraval are both going to have to work their way there. Uh, now, Mike and I got a chance to see the first St. Mark's Archer game, and and St. Mark's kind of dominated them, but. I always say this. I always think it's hard to beat a team a second time around because now Archmer knows uh, what St. Mark's is coming. They know St. Mark's scored on a couple pretty set pieces. So, you know, if you're Archmer, you want to avoid set pieces against St. Mark's. But right now, St. Mark's just not giving up anything. Uh, and we saw that the other day. Uh, you know, 3 nothing win over DMA, a 3 nothing win over Padua, 7 nothing win over Archmer. They're just not giving up any goals right now. And they have a freshman keeper who, when the, when the other teams do get past, you know, the defense, she does a good job in goal. And, and uh, so, you know, they would be my favorite along with Caravelle to make it to the finals. But, you know, they're both going to have to play their game. And the thing about soccer, like I said, soccer can come down to luck sometimes. You could get a lucky goal. Um, you know, you could get a call to go your way and, and have a penalty kick early in the game or, or a corner kick. And, and, you know, get a lucky break, and then, you know, you force that team that's favorite, you know, they're playing with the, the pressure on their back, you know, to, to get it to, to the finals. And, and so they're going to have to play, uh, they're going to have to play well, both of them to get there. But I would really love to see Caravelle St. Mark's June 1st at Caesar Rodney. Mike, what about you? Yeah, it's, uh, I love the St. Mark's team. They're so much fun to watch. They're just an offensive uh, juggernaut. And, uh, and like Jason said, they really they had a one-nil one, a one -nil win at Ursuline early in the season. But other than that, uh, it's been multiple goal wins for them. And, um, you know, Archner, they're, they're a good team. They have, they have girls who can score. Um, but we just saw that show a couple weeks ago. And, you know, Archner – as talented as they are, they, they just couldn't get anything. They couldn't generate anything against the, the Marks. So it's, I think the Spartans playing at home, it's going to be their, their game to lose. On the other side, uh, I don't really know anything about the Indian River uh, girls team. Um, I do know about Caravelle. They don't give up hardly any goals. So it's going to be uh, – IR is going to have to find a way to score uh, against the Bucks. Um, I think that's going to be a, a tight game, but I, I, I'd like to. I, I'm with Jason on this. I'd love to see Caravelle and St. Mark's in the final. I think that would be something special. Absolutely, and again, both of our Division One and Division Two number one seeds are in the semifinal in Padua and Caravelle, and they are both defending state champions. So both of them still looking to be knocked off here, and both trying to win back-to-back -back titles. So a lot going on in our spring sports playoffs, and. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, Nick Allison Drini joined by Mike Lang and Jason Winchell. And before we head out, guys, quickly, um, just last second thoughts on our spring sports postseason. Um, anything, you know, what you like, maybe something you didn't like. Just overall, um, just a quick uh, exit, <laughs> Jason. We'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, like I said, I think everything was great. Uh, like Mike said, the. Uh, I just wish they would have staggered. Saturday was the busiest day of the year, and I just thought they could have done a better job of staggering. You had games that could have played under the lights, uh, Caravelle softball, um, uh, Red Lion softball. You could have uh, had maybe a couple of those soccer games. Uh, I know two of them were at Caravelle, so you could have maybe moved one of them tonight. Um, I just think it would have been a, you know, a chance to get more fans uh, out to multiple events for the day. I mean, like Nick said earlier, what a great job for, to even have the season. But as the, the restrictions lifted on on Friday, Saturday, you know, you could have got full crowds at these at these games. And and I just think uh, that was the one thing I would uh, would have loved to see different. Uh, even I mentioned it earlier, look, there's like nine or ten games tomorrow starting at four o'clock. Um, you know, and then you had a, a, a couple five o'clock games and only, you know, two at night, one at six and one at seven. Uh, I, I just think, uh, again, you know, it, you know, it's hard to say not to start all, everything at four o'clock tomorrow, but 
I would have loved to see, you know, some, some things staggered a little bit, but you know, that's what we are. We've got some great matchups, and you know, what I say is uh, go out and support your school and, and support your teams and, and, and draw a big crowd out there, and, and we got some exciting quarterfinals, semifinals, and final matchups in all, all the sports. So get out, support, and, and uh, you know, cheer on your, cheer on your school. And it just kind of stands out to me just how wide open some of these sports were, you know, uh, the lacrosse, boys lacrosse notwithstanding, um, just how many competitive teams there are, especially in baseball and in softball and, and the girls lacrosse. This has just been so much fun to watch. When you go out to a game and almost every time it's the out, outcome is not predetermined. So uh, it's been a lot of fun this year for me to get out just about every day and, uh, and go see a different team. It was, it was fun to be able to, to watch teams from Sussex County and, and some of the teams from downstate that I normally don't get to see. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, I'm expecting some weird, wild, and wacky games this week, so especially in baseball. I think it's going to be outstanding. Absolutely. Well, there you have it. We talked long enough. <laughs> a lot going on our spring sports postseason tournament updates and make sure you get out quarterfinals and semifinal matchups tomorrow night and then look for Thursday and Saturday as we continue to bring these spring sports seasons to a close. For Nick Allison Drini, Jason Winchell, Mike Lang, and Nick Holliday, um, we'll see you next time on Delaware Live Sports.